Well, hey everybody, welcome into this Photoshop video brought to you as always by tutvid.com. My name is Nathaniel Dodson, and today we're going to take a look at creating this ultra smooth, very colorful background effect. And before you say, what? I'm not going to watch a tutorial on this. This is so easy to do. We're going to cover some really important techniques that you really, really want to know in order to get super smooth color, get rid of banding and how uh, different ways you can attack that problem in general here in Photoshop. It's going to be a fun tutorial. It's going to be a fast tutorial. I think we're all going to learn a lot and create some cool stuff in the process. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And with all that out of the way, let's jump in and get this thing started right now. Okay, here we are in Photoshop. What I want to do, because we're working with the bitmap image and we can't really scale up without losing quality, we're going to create a new file here and we want it to be big. How big? Well, we're going to start with about 4K. Now, important thing here, I want to bump my pixels per inch up to 300 and most important, you're probably working with an 8-bit image, we want the 16-bit depth. Super duper 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 important. It's going to make the file size pretty huge, but the overall amazing quality and smoothness and color that this will allow us to achieve is absolutely worth it. The first thing I want to do is go window and make sure I open up my swatches panel. Now you can load in all sorts of cool swatches here by hitting the little flyout menu. I'm just going to mess with what I've got in here. I want to create a new background for each color that we're going to paint. So I'm going to hit the new layer icon and I'm going to grab my brush tool, right click and just choose a huge soft edge brush. So maybe we'll go with eh, a little over, maybe like 650 and set hardness down to 0%. Man, eh, maybe not 650, maybe we'll go 500. You want to make sure you have a fast computer, a powerful computer computer because this is going to this is going to hog up some memory here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit to help us get a, a better view of what we're working on. Maybe I'll collapse my swatches over a little bit and I want to sample maybe a pink color first. Now we're painting up on a layer just here for the pink and I'm going to go in and paint some pink in and it really can just be sort of a random pattern wherever you want it to be. Let's create a new layer here. We're going to add some blue. I'm going to add maybe some blue up here. Let me add a big bunch of blue there maybe just a touch of blue down there. Great. Let's create a new layer. We're going to add some, maybe some dull sort of flat reds. And I'm going to add them maybe sort of over here and here and maybe a little bit over here. You can really just have fun with this. And here on a new layer, we're going to go with a darker blue. I'm going to add a darker blue down over here and also up in this corner up here. Don't worry if it looks like you're covering stuff up. Let's create another new layer. We're going to add some yellow here. So I'm going to go with, yeah, let's kick some yellow in up here. Allow it to kind of mix with what we've got going on. And we'll throw some yellow down here as well. And maybe what we'll do is kick some orange into the very, very front corner. And I know I'm painting the orange on the same layer as the yellow, but I think it'll work just fine for us. Now the next thing we want to do, we can actually close our swatches. We want to blur each of these layers 500 pixels. So I'm going to say filter. I'm actually going to zoom in just a little bit here. I'm going to go filter. I'm going to choose blur. I'm going to choose Gaussian blur. And we're going to go with a huge 300 pixel blur. I'm going to hit OK. You can see it's really blending everything. And I'm going to do that to each of the remaining layers by just going filter and applying the same Gaussian blur. So as you can see, we already have a bit of a cool effect. The problem is you can definitely see some of that white background showing through, right? We have a lot of transparency. So I'm going to hold down shift and select all of my layers by shift clicking the bottom and then top layer. And I'm going to drag all these down to the new layer icon to duplicate them. Great. Now for each of the duplicated color layers, I'm going to blur an additional 300 pixels. And the beauty of this is because all the colors are on their own layers. If you're looking at it and saying there's really not enough pink through the middle, I could drag the pink up a little bit to help reveal a little bit more of it. Maybe the yellow is a little bit too strong. I can push that down a little bit. Maybe put the yellow down and eh, maybe I'll push the yellow up one more, something like that. And you can really play with it and have fun. Now, when you're doing all of this coloring and layering and blurring, this is where the 16-bit image is really helpful. If we zoom way in to like 200% here, you can see our colors, there's a tiny bit of banding, but really nothing that you would ever notice. And especially when we do the next step, you would really never notice it. Now, one thing to help eliminate any little banding that remains, and this is just a good tip in general, is hit the letter D to reset your foreground and background colors and go filter noise, add noise, and we're going to add a tiny little bit of noise like half a percentage point hit okay and i'm going to add that same exact noise to all of my layers a teeny tiny bit of noise and that noise is really just going to help blend all the colors together a little bit more you can zoom in and just see we have these beautiful gradients mixing with multiples of colors just looking really really nice and looking really really smooth and just to illustrate the point here i'm going ahead and beginning with an 8-bit file and quickly painting it and doing everything we just did and you're going to see how much more banding there is in this 8-bit file compared with the 16-bit file that we used and now back here at the original file again 
This is just it. That's it. We've created our colored background at this point. You can export it as a JPEG or whatever you like, and it's going to look great. You could go ahead and drag some stuff in. I've got these sort of toppings. I could drag these over and drop them in place. I think it might be a bit much, but, you know, throw a couple dots, a couple streaks, whatever you like. It's your background after all. You can do what you like with it. All right, well, there you have it. I told you it'd be quick. It'd be easy. It'd be fast. If you followed the tutorial, you really liked it, and you, you really, really liked it, upload your image to Instagram. I'd love to see it. Tag me in the photo. Uh, you can use my handle. It's at tutvid. It's at T-U-T-V-I-D. I would absolutely love to see what you created. I like to get in there and like and comment and, you know, occasionally share what the good people tag me in on Instagram. Uh, for messing around in Photoshop and playing with, I guess, the brush tool and blurring and noise and that really important 16-bit depth and so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.